Our next presentation is titled From DNA to Therapy, presented by Lolita Anthelban. 14 years ago, a healthy couple gave birth to their first child, a baby girl. From day one, the baby was very sick. Her muscles were weak, her facial features were distorted, and her blood was acidic. These were all signs that she was unable to use carbohydrate to support cellular function. However, when her physician tested proteins known to control that process, they did not find the defect they were looking for. Unfortunately for the baby, she did not respond to any treatment and died at 19 months old. Her physicians concluded that she must have had a genetic defect somewhere within the 9 billion DNA base pair of her genome, though they did not quite know which one was affected. Their suspicion was confirmed nine years later when they found that the baby has a DNA mutation which in a protein which functions to transport a sugar byproduct into the mitochondria. That protein was called the mitochondria pyruvate carrier, or the MPC. With advances in the fields of genetics, more people now than ever have access to their genome sequences. Since then, three more patients have been found to have a mutation within the MPC, that same protein as the baby from 14 years ago. The real challenge that physicians and scientists alike must address is that since most DNA mutations do not cause any diseases, how do we tell which ones do? How do small changes in DNA sequences affect our overall health? In my research, I developed a, rep, um, a tool that allowed me to answer just that. Using a revolutionary genome editing technology, I re-engineer cell lines that allow me to input specific DNA sequences inside of a cell and then measure changes in cellular function. When I did this with the baby's DNA, I found that her mutation completely destroyed her ability to convert sugar into energy. I also found that the other mutation in three other patients produced a weaker MPC protein than that of a healthy individual. Now, unlike the baby, people with latter mutations still respond to a treatment of low carbohydrate diet. My work not only gives us the insight to the disease pathology, and, but also help predict the outcome of future mutations. My plan is to use this work to urge clinicians to perform more genetic testing on their patients and also help them interpret the data they receive. Thank you.